besides my own personal interest in commercials. I'm showing some of these commercials and in these sets that they are actually broadcast in because I want to show some of the differences between then and now. The internet is really the main game changer here. But look at some of those commercials. Media was even more moralizing, by, by a tenfold, more moralizing then than now. And yet, even the slightest hint of it now gets met with massive resistance. Now, you could say this is because of these extremists. And yeah, I guess we could blame them, but why... Why over just the past few years did this just suddenly become something? If this is something that media has been doing for a long time, why is it just now that you're complaining about it, even when it's like a tenth of of how much media moralized in the 90s? What, what's up with that? You know, if the current times are the mo when we're being the most politically correct or being forced to be the most politically correct... Yeah, did you, I mean, what about the 90s? Do you look at the 90s as something that was a horrible time for that? Is it something that, like many people, look at the 50s? Do you look at the 90s as something we never want to go back towards? What is it? Because that seems to be the way that people are avoiding the 90s seems to, I mean, just in conversation, in the way that, that, that you know, Oh, talking about the way things used to be, well, the feminists seem to want to avoid the 90s because it shoves forth this idea that, you know, feminism doesn't have to mean the this new this new thing where it's it's putting a kind of a negative stigma on being a guy. To where people are feeling bad about being guys. You know, that hadn't occurred yet. And it wasn't anywhere in the, in the game at that point. That, that wasn't the main push. That certainly was not pop feminism at the time. Now pop feminism, it's cool to, uh, to try to make men feel bad about themselves for being men. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not saying that's what feminism is, but that's kind of the, the pop culture, the pop feminism that's, that you see right now. And it doesn't even have to be very blatant. It can just be this tiniest little hint of things, and it sets a lot of people off, because people are tired of seeing that. But what changed? And then, you know, a lot of the people who are the anti-SJWs, anti-feminists, some of you probably don't want to look at some of this older stuff, because it shows just how much media was able to do moralizing, and it, it wasn't a big deal. Maybe you don't like to look at the fact that it used to be a lot more than it is now. I mean, right now, you know, just a, a something called dear white people freaks everyone the fuck out. They could have come out with that in 1995 and it would have just been, oh, it's a, it's a kind of a moralizing piece. Okay. That's how people would have thought of it then. Now it's just like, it's the emergency. Yeah, what happened? You know, the internet has changed so much when it comes to our culture. It's changed our culture so much. Now we have, you know, some some person filming their their dog uh, doing something that's would take a million takes to actually have been able to get it, you know, recorded that way. And but they, you know, as far as if you tried to recreate it, you know, purposely. And it gets, you know, it gets a, it's a viral video and it gets millions of views, right? You know, when someone just out of nowhere can just become an instant star, whether temporary or not. Yeah, it, ma it makes the people that have the most extreme mindsets stand out in a crowd. Whereas before, when people would take extreme mindsets, people just kind of stayed away from them, sometimes didn't even talk about them. And they went away into the nothingness that's, that most of them deserve. As far as, you know, getting social attention. 
Now even the smallest of things gets all this attention, and it can end up making it on regular news if it gets enough attention. I'm not trying to defend media with, with any of this stuff. I like to categorize what has happened, how media has changed to go with how society has changed. I mean, marketing is going to try very hard to make sure that they're covering as many people as they can, right? The differences between, you know, in inflation between 1995 and now doesn't seem to be nearly as much of a change. I mean, as far as the way that how much things cost, right, um, doesn't seem to be nearly the extreme as between the 1970s and the 1990s. So it's it's interesting to note where some of the the most of the the effects of inflation or the the effects of the the things that seem to be effects of inflation have increased or decreased over you know the past several decades. I mean just because look at the car commercials, look at how much things cost. You know, they had a Mercedes commercial somewhere in there that uh oh for 40 grand and it's just like wow that's uh that's something you would expect out of you know 2005 not 1995 right so the commercials that i've been uploading have been for i mean i'm not just uploading any of the stuff that i'm finding on tapes i'm going to make another video uh channel that's purely around commercials and that will be just, you know, any old thing that I'm finding on video cassette, I'll, I'll upload it to that channel. Uh, once I have, uh, once I figure out the, the name that I want to give it, I will upload a video saying, hey, you know, you check out this new channel. It's purely, a, uh, uh, has to do with commercials. It's, that's all it's going to show is clips of commercials and uh, channel bumpers and, uh, old movie trailers. And just assorted things that I'm finding on the video cassettes. And that'll be all that channel is about. Um, I'll still have my uh, uh, Kazoom's Mystery Commercial Theater. I'll still keep that on this channel. I'll probably upload those to that as well. So it'll be it'll be uh, you know cloned, uh, mirrored. But I don't want to clog this channel with that type of thing. The ones that I have been uploading to this channel have been some of the ones that really stick out to me that show a, a very big difference in culture. And I wanted to point that out. So, to those that are disliking it, um, realize that this stuff is being uploaded for a reason. Um, I think it's important to take note of how things have changed. Uh, you, can, you can see a lot of things about a culture based on the way that marketing uh, you know, breaks people apart. What does marketing think that people think is important? Now, marketing will obviously exaggerate a number of things about what they think people find important, but many of the things that they're shoving forth are kind of true um, as far as their generalizations about the way people think. When it comes to that Paula Abdul commercial, that one, to me, shows when kind of the beginning of the end of Paula having, you know, a career based off of the things that she has in the past. I mean, she came out with another album. Um, one more album after that. It did pretty well, but that that was it. Um, when she went with the whole Diet Coke commercial thing, she she sold out. I mean, that's like, the, you, you can't, it's hard to sell out more than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> she, she already had a lot of money. Why did she need to do that? Well, I guess it gets her name out there, but it's, uh, it's it's hard to it's hard to sell out more than that you know <sighs> anyway i mean is that i mean may i mean maybe she actually believes in diet coke she thinks diet coke is the greatest i mean maybe she actually feels that way and if she does then maybe it's not selling out as much as she it seems she did but um i don't think anyone loves diet coke that much so <laughs> anyway <laughs> 